passion. Belief. Nationwide Building Society, official sponsor of the Nationwide Conference. In 1997, Hereford were relegated from the Football League. They'd been there 25 years. For the last three years, they finished second in the conference, but it's always been playoff heartbreak. Halifax were conference champions back in 98, but their celebrations were short-lived. After just three seasons, they were relegated. So it's a similar vision for both managers. Chris Wilder of Halifax and Graham Turner of Hereford have their sights on promotion back to where they both feel they belong. Foster! Delight for Halifax Town. Here are the supporters. Come on! Halifax have never been involved in any end of season playoffs. Will it be beginner's luck? Hereford's fans have been in the playoffs every year since 2004. Will it be third time lucky? We're at the Walker Stadium in Leicester for the conference promotion final between Halifax and Hereford. Well, there are the two teams in the tunnel with the officials. Hereford all in white today. Halifax, of course, play in their traditional blue. The semi-finals were both very, very tense affairs. John Coleman, you were with us for both of the semi-finals. Let's talk about the way that Hereford went through. 1-1 in that first leg, away from home, like they've done in the last two years, but finally they got through. Yeah, they laid the home jinx, you know. They had the struggles in the past at home. They did a good professional job on home. You know, and to go and win an exit time, when that could have gone either way, I think that might set them up now for the big push for the final. But as I said before, I've just got this feeling for Halifax. I'm not all along. You've got this feeling for Yorkshire teams, haven't you? Oh, you, yeah. think, you think Leeds will do it tomorrow? You think you've got Leeds, several. and we mentioned about the other teams. We also <laughs> mentioned Farsley, didn't we? Yeah, Farsley as well. Yeah. You know, I just think it's going to be the year for the Yorkshire teams to go up in the playoffs. That other semi-final, of course, between Grays and Halifax, that was a game where we saw the second leg of that one, and that was an amazing match as well, wasn't it? Dubious penalty calls, shots from all over the place. Yeah, the, the game swung into life in the second half, it was a bit of a dull affair the first half. I think both teams were very nervous, and once they, uh, they let the shackles off, they both had a go with each other, and you know, Halifax did great to come back from that, because once they went 2-1 down in that game, to bounce back and get a goal when everyone thought they were out, it's done amazing. Well, the two teams are going to be presented final style, FA Cup final style to two, the two special guests today. Bill King is the chairman of the Nationwide Conference and alongside him is Peter Gandolfi from the conference sponsors Nationwide. I always wonder, Paul, situations like this, what you actually say to players. Did, did you just say hello? It is just a case of saying hello. I think, in a way, it's probably the last thing the players need because they're nervous enough and this just hypes it all up even more, adds to the tension and uh, I bet the players won't even have a clue that they've shaken hands with anybody before <laughs> the game, it, it, it just blanks out and, and the game's the only thing they're thinking about. And how does the manager feel at a time like this? It's out of your hands a bit, isn't it? Totally, I remember stood there on the sideline uh, looking across and seeing Graham Wesley with Stevenage and thinking there's no more I can do now, it's up to my lads and um, I'm sure the, the two managers will be feeling exactly the same way now. And how quickly after the game has started do you think the managers realise, right, that's the setup of that team, that's how they're playing, this is what we've got to do, I might have to change something. I think you realise within a couple of minutes. I mean, it, you know, most games you have a, a real strong idea of how the opposition are going to set up. But I think if you're confident in the way your own players are going to be, you stick to your principles and hopefully the players will go out and do the job. This promotion final has long been the target of these two sides. Well, they're here now. Halifax and Hereford, and both 90 minutes away from the Football League. It's Halifax who get us off and underway. Their first ever taste of the playoffs as a football club. Hereford with painful semi-final defeats, their first taste of a conference promotion final. There'll be plenty of nerves out there, and both managers saying before the games they feel it's a question of which side settles first and settles best which could be decisive here's Ryan Sugden pushing down good movement up front Lewis Kelly asking questions and firing wide well, this is the first bit of a test for Graham Turner's side from a set piece how will they deal with it this could be crucial as the afternoon goes on Sugden got the touch on appeals for handball the referee not impressed that's a good header at the near post and it has come off 
Makanda wore his hand, I think, as he tried to sort of get out of the way. We see it again here. Ryan Sugden makes a good run, gets the flick on. Oh, definitely for me, coming off of his left hand. You see it again. There we see the header, hands up in the air. I think if any of the officials have seen that, could well have been a penalty. I thought that it's good play by Halifax. Travis has got that. Now, did the goalkeeper make contact? Well, the Halifax defenders are furious with Simon Travis. The referee's given a goal kick. Well, I think he was going down after he took the touch here, Simon Travis, but you've got to say, it's some poor defending. Was the goalkeeper, John Kennedy, a little bit slow off his line? We see Steve Houseman allowing the ball to run through. Well, I think Simon Travis has gone down a little bit too easily here. Yeah, we see it again, John Kennedy just pulling his arms out of the way. Travis again, though, showing his pace. No contact for me. Forward by Young. This is Stansfield. Only Andy Williams is in advance of him. Stansfield just idles forward. Young with the challenge, Foster, the shot from Stanley. What an effort that was. Well, he's just helping out, is he? Waiting around him, Stansfield to... Maybe pass, or just, he's just helping him out, the ball runs clear. I think he thought the challenge was coming in and he thought he'd just drive it goalwards, Craig Stanley. It's a terrific effort. I'm going to say a good save as well. Oh, John Kennedy. Williams can get forward, the teenager breaks with real promise. Still it's Andy Williams. Well, you've got to give him some credit there for persistence. Didn't really get his head up and look for the pass, but he knew what he wanted to do once he crossed that halfway line. Head down, driving towards goal. Another one in the offing here, perhaps, as Stansfield carries forward. And it's wide. Well, what a good chance this is for Rob Purdy. Ball just sits nicely for him. Stansfield makes the good run. It's a decent pass. Ryan Green just allows the ball to run free. He's got his shot wrong completely, hasn't he? Rob Purdy. We see it again, it's bobbling, it's bouncing, it's come off his shin. Here's Thompson. And Danny Forrest. Two Hereford players detailed to stop him, they're unable to do it. Sugden's return to Foster. Took a deflection, and it's behind for a goal kick. And one of those was here at the Walkers Stadium, a 4-0 defeat with Bradford. Looks like Rob Purdy's got a little bit of a knock as he went for a head up. It just looks like a cut lip. Have to go off the field of play for this. Is just runs into Peter Atherton now, I think. And just caught him across the side of the mouth. Well, the look of uh, experience there from Peter Atherton, wasn't it? Seem to say to Purdy, don't do that again. Greg Young's allowed to carry a long way forward against ten men Hereford. Still Rob Purdy getting treatment. Here's an effort from Killeen. Oh, I say, what a goal from Lewis Killeen. It's 1-0 to Halifax and it's an absolute beauty. And so far so good for Halifax, but they're caught out here and it's 1-1. It's Andy Williams, Hereford born and bred, who equalises. Well, it's the sort of thing you wouldn't expect Halifax to get caught out by, but this is a wonderful cross. Good play by McKenna Worry coming out from the back, setting up the play wide for Adam Stansfield, who just sets it up and whips it far post. Peter Atherton completely caught out. And the simplest of tasks for Andy Williams to stoop down and head it into the bottom corner. Wonderful cross by Adam Stansfield for his strike partner. The players we know from everyone who get forward and really try and play their silky skills in the higher part of the pitch. Green, Stansfield underneath it. And what a save that was. And as we approach half-time, there's nothing between them. Halifax and Hereford, both still dreaming of heading to the Football League and both with very real dreams and are still very much alive. 
All square at half time then. A wonder strike from Lewis Colleen. Put Halifax in the driving seat. But there was an excellent response from Hereford who was stung into life. And Andy Williams with his 13th goal of the season means it's one all. Well, there's nothing between these two at the Walker Stadium. This one hanging so finely in the balance. He who dares wins. And the side from Hereford, the home of the SAS, will be well aware of that motto. And it might just favour them if they're able to keep up the positive improvement they showed, particularly towards the second half of that first half. No changes in terms of personnel at half-time. It's as you were. This is Andy Williams for Stansfield. He's still got two defenders to get beyond. The closest one is Young. Support does arrive. Stansfield's done really well. And Kennedy, the final line of defence, walks Hereford again. Great skills, isn't it? And then Hereford now on the front foot. It's Purdy this time. That's a good run, is it, by Adam Stansfield? He's got nothing else on. He decides to take on the two defenders, does well. He's got a choice there, and he goes for the target. He's bang on target. Good save by Kennedy. But then again, a decent pass really was on to his strike partner, Andy Williams. Kirby now wearing number 25, the third different shirt number he's had so far after he got that cut lip in the first half after the clash with Atherton. Here he is, Purdy, beyond Atherton. Thompson comes back. Now, the referee has a real decision to make here. Well, he's given the goal kick, and you can't see as this is a goal kick, and Tyrone Thompson goes to ground very, very easily. Well, he's done well, Purdy. He's been nice and positive to get in behind. Well, you've got to say for me, Bill, that's a penalty. He's made no contact at all with the ball, and he's taken Rob Purdy's legs away. Williams can come again. Stansfield! It's a terrific cross, isn't it? He's not closed down, he's been given time and space to deliver. It's a terrific ball in. Adam Stansfield really didn't make the contact he was looking for. It's a great opportunity for the centre forward. Gets over the top of Peter Atherton. And his downward header just drifts past the far post. And it's an attacking move from Halifax. Off goes the defender, Greg Young. And on comes Steve Bushell. At the moment, Halifax have certainly been invigorated by the introduction of Bushell. That's an inviting ball, and that's an important touch away by Makanda Warwick. Now Killeen, trying to add to his first half spectacular. That's a decent cross in initially that Makandawari gets away, isn't it? And as Halifax then get bodies into the box, I think it's Matt Doughty actually who has the final strike at goal. He's predominantly left-footed, but he's just trying to fade it in towards that far top corner. An early departure for Ryan Sugden. Married yesterday, won't be off on his honeymoon just yet. He'll stay to see what happens here. And the Halifax top scorer is coming up, John Grant. Back and it's Lewis Colleen on the ball, the scorer of their goal. In towards Grant. There's the lead for Halifax. The substitute comes on to put Halifax 2 1 in front and within touching distance of the Football League. Well, we haven't seen too much of Lewis Colleen in this second half, but what a run this is. Finds the space, drives forward down the left-hand side, a decent cross in. Grant gets across Beckwith, gets to the ball first and touches it into the bottom corner. But it's all about the run of Colleen. Takes on the last defender, gets the ball into the box, and Grant first to the ball. Well, Andy Williams, the scorer of the Hereford goal, is going to make way. Giyapua, the semi final hero, comes on. And lightning strike twice. 
Grant, Makandawari allowed to get back at him. And then goes Makandawari with a rather frustrated challenge, you feel. You also feel we may see the first yellow card of the afternoon. That wasn't a very tidy tackle, was it? He's going to get a yellow card for this. John Grant giving him too many problems there, using his strength, turns away. Makandawari, maybe a little bit of frustration. He's had a good game so far, Makandawari. Well, he gets a yellow card for a rush challenge. And another change forced on Halifax here. Matt Doughty picked up an injury. He can't continue. And that's Chris Senior to come on for the remaining quarter of an hour, or certainly that's what Halifax hope anyway. On by Ferrell. Ipua. Travis now. Ipua! Just as he did in the semi-final, he's done it in the final. And Hereford have come from behind again. It's 2-2. Two -two. Well, that's terrific play by Hereford. They look like they were dead and buried. It's all about Kia Pua. He's brought the ball down well. He's got it out wide. And then he's not been marked. Adam Quinn doesn't get back into position for the first time. And it's a good ball in by Travis. But if Pua takes the advantage and it's a terrific header Stanley in there Apua to Makanda Warwick who scored in the semi-final himself all options if Janine can get this right Makanda Warwick over the bar well he's unlucky isn't he he's made a good run good deep run tries to climb over the top of Adam Quinn he's actually headed it down onto the back of Quinn's head Quinn doing just enough. Good pressure by Hereford. It's a terrific response by Hereford. It's Purdy with the corner. Too much pushing and shoving in there for the liking of the referee. It's a free kick. probably just not too tight here Alex Janine and some good skills as well by Forrest and that's a, a dreadful tackle in the end a tired tackle and a yellow card for Alex Janine and I don't think there can be any question about the caution there Merriford have a man down as well that's why Ferrell's put it out well, this Craig Stanley's gone down with some cramp here Typical of midfield players when they work so hard through that area, up and down the park. This is to be expected at this stage of the game. I think the referee got this one correct. So extra time it is. Regulation time couldn't separate Halifax Town and Hereford United. 2-2, extra time to come. It's been a second half tale of subs. John Grant comes on for Halifax. Seven minutes later, he scores. Then Hereford's Guy Apua comes on. Four minutes later, he equalizes. Extra time is next. Halifax two, Hereford two. We are going to extra time. John Coleman's here. He's the manager of conference champions Accrington. And so is Paul Simpson, the manager of Carlisle, who won this match last year. Have you changed your mind yet, Paul, from what you've seen? No, no, I still think Hereford are coming through. I think they look the fitter side at the moment and uh, they, they look as if they're getting stronger. Changed your mind, John? No, no, I'm still going to go for Halifax to pinch one on the break. Here we go, another 30 minutes. We have extra time all over Sky Sports at the moment. Here's Clive Walker and Bill Leslie. Well, the substitutes have been so influential in this final so far, haven't they, with uh, Grant netting and Guy Epua netting. All the changes available have been made by Halifax Town. Hereford still have the option of making two. Craig Stanley was really struggling towards the end of normal time with cramp. And uh, we're just getting confirmation he's going to be unable to continue. And now you see Jamie Pittman. A like-for-like -like swap for him. Fresh legs in that oh-so-important area in the heart of midfield. And it may just be that the fact that Hereford 
have these substitutes in hand that could prove to be decisive. But then again, this game has been so hard to predict from the start. Nothing is going to change now as we enter extra time. And Janine, Stansfield. Still Stansfield, side netting. I think this is good awareness by Adam Stansfield. He's got the ball into his feet. He's taken it to his left-hand side. And he's obviously aware there's nobody else available in the middle. Could have possibly clipped a little crossing, but he's gone for the near post. He's unlucky. Here comes Colleen. He's still got some energy to pick out Senior. The offside flags up. It won't count. Well, again, this was a tight decision for me. Here we see the offside, though. Only just. That's a decent little finish as well. That was Chris Senior. Goalkeeper, Wayne Brown. Weren't aware of the flag going up. The final substitution of the afternoon is made, and Adam Stansfield, who could have left a wonderful impact if that effort he just had had not gone into the side netting. Departs the fray, and on comes Stuart Fleetwood. just nicks in ahead of Fleetwood still nothing between them after the first half of extra time we are as we were at the end of 90 minutes still 2-2 two, two. two managers with us today who know all about football at this level Paul Simpson who's had two successive promotions with Carlisle and John Coleman manager of conference champions Accrington Stanley Paul what is the manager's role right now He's just got to get on there and in the short space of time just tell them how good they are, just lift them, everything positive, tell them they're fitter than them, tell them they've looked the stronger side and try and get them through this next 15 minutes with as much as they've got. Anything to add to that, John? Uh, what I would say is that you know there's a lot of tired legs out there, but it's going to be tired minds that cost you the game, not tired legs. You know, it's going to come down to a mistake here if someone's going to put it up. And you've got to be careful that you don't make the mistake. Now, you said that winning this game is the ideal way to go up. I bet you're glad you're already up, aren't oh, you? Oh, <laughs> I couldn't go through this now, I tell you. It would have been Chris Wilder there, with me and Paul were saying, with 20 minutes to go, you'd have been screaming for the clock to take down. And you had this all wrapped up by 90 minutes, didn't you, last year, Paul? Oh, we were delighted it didn't go to extra time. But uh, it's been a fantastic game today, I have to say. Really entertaining, a great advert for conference football. Will it go to penalties? Let's find out. Is Clive Walker and Bill Leslie again. 15 minutes of football left to separate them before we go to the penalty spot for an outcome. Halifax it is to kick off this final chapter. What lies ahead, what twists in the tail. It's Travis. And Green. Oh, disappointing cross in the end by Ryan Green. Here's Ipua. And Travis. One back by the Hereford midfielder. And away by Quinn. Well, I just think on the last couple of occasions, Adam Quinn's just dropped off Giapua. Giving him a little bit of room and space. That's not the right thing for him to be doing. And there's a challenge. And oh! How about that? Ryan Green, the unlikely hero. But what a hero. What a strike. And for the first time, Hereford are in front. Well, the question is, was he going for goal or was it a cross? It doesn't matter. It's in the back of the net. Oh, we talked about Ryan Green getting forward. A little bit of good fortune, he gets the ball into feet. And he's just clipped it in towards that far post area. Well, I'll have to give him the benefit of the doubt because he was going for goal here. There's nothing else on. And he's delivered into that far post area and takes it out on the corner flag as well. 
His second goal this season, only his fourth for Hereford in 108 appearances. He'll pick up a yellow card, but I dare say he'll feel it's worth it. Quite a goal, quite a celebration, and it's turning into quite an afternoon for Hereford. Well, I don't think he's too worried as a fan celebrate way behind the Halifax goal. And that's given away, and the fullback can have another say here. It's Haslam. Makanda Wari with a vital challenge. That's a great tackle by Tamika Makanda Wari just in time. This is a bad mistake by Rob Purdy. He was that tightness. Haslam coming forward. Great run on the outside, but Makanda Wari first to the ball. His goalkeeper was there as well, but comes off the worst and this is a terrific challenge by the captain well, just as well it doesn't look like it's going to penalty kicks Wayne Brown took a nasty blow to the head he looks out for the count at the moment all the substitutions have been made of course Craig Mawson the Substitute goalkeeper for Hereford. Will not be allowed to come on. Well, he looks in trouble, doesn't he? He doesn't really move since it's happened. And we see Makanda Wari making the challenge. Looks like it's a, a knee in the side of the head. Well, these smelling salts have come out. Looks Everything like he, required to get him up. It looks like he won't continue. The physio there suggesting that he needs more treatment. And this could prove to be massively significant. Still plenty of time to be played, and with ten men and a makeshift goalkeeper, Halifax will feel they've got every chance, and if they then do take it to penalties, they'll be up against an outfield player. What a day it's been, some goals of massive quality. Well, All started off by Lewis Colleen. It has been, and what a strike this was early on in the match. Terrific strike by Lewis Colleen. And then we saw the Andy Williams stooping header at the far post. And Colleen again making the goal this time for John Grant. And this is a terrific header by the substitute, Giapua. And then we see the goal by fullback Ryan Green that just clipped it into the far post. Some terrific goals in the game today. What does Chris Wilder think of now with what looks like the goalkeeper for Hereford going off? Well, he's sitting up now, but will he be able to continue? I'm sure the referee will give him all the time he needs. They're always wary when a goalkeeper gets a blow on the head. Critical times, nervous times. The thing is, has he got his senses enough to stay in goal, or is it sensible to make a substitution? Up to the goalkeeper. Does he feel okay? It's down to him, his decision. Well, there's been over three minutes now since he took that blow to the head. Three minutes to be added on at the end of. Extra time. And they'll do everything they can to keep Wayne Brown on. The man who usually goes in goal is Craig Stanley. He, of course, has already gone off. He's already been substituted the midfielder. Well, I'm sure if you're the, the Halifax player now, most thing you want to do is fire shots on target and test the goalkeeper and see if he's alert enough to deal with anything that comes his way. A four-minute delay for Wayne Brown to regain his senses. Well, the whistle hadn't been blown then when Martin Foster picked the ball up. Well, trying to play the advantage to referee. Missed by Makanda Well, he got a touch on it and it glances its way through to 
Wayne Brown. Foster stabbed it off Travis looking for the corner. And he's got it. Well, that's some tough defending for Hereford to do over the last few minutes. Trying to get everybody back into the six yard box. Everyone is back, bar Ipua. I think Graham Turner wanted him back as well. Green is in there, but hobbling. And listen to that cheer from the Hereford fans. Wayne Brown is back. Six minutes of time to be added on. It's not over yet. Grant. This is Foster. He's found Quinn. Oh, went for the top corner, did it so well. But Brown plucks it brilliantly. Well, I'll tell you what, what a piece of skill this is from the big centre back. It's right in the top corner. And here's Fleetwood. This could really settle it if he can get away here. It's Stuart Fleetwood. And it's blocked. Atherton, the oldest man on the park, got back. Well, he's done well here, Fleetwood, hasn't he? Used his pace to get in behind. Haslam thought about bringing him down. The goalkeeper's done well as well to push him wide, but there's the experience. There's Peter Atherton just sticking a foot out. Pushes it away, but Hereford can now waste more time taking this corner. I'm sure they'll keep it in there as well. Not many people committed forward for this corner. Ipua. It's another one. Ipua dancing his way beyond and winning another corner. He's doing it all on his own up there. Well, he's done well there, Gipua, hasn't he? Just wasting time trying to get the clock to run down. Kiapua up there and winning three consecutive corner kicks in the last minute of time added on. Hereford a second away from the Football League return. They have waited so long for and so painfully for. A giant cheer for a giant achievement for Hereford United. Graham Turner after nine years of conference football has taken Hereford back to the Football League. Three seasons in a row they finished second. For the last two, they suffered the agony of playoff semi-final defeat. But at the first ever conference promotion final here at the Walker Stadium, they have done it after an enthralling afternoon where twice they came from behind and once they went in front, it was Ryan Green, the hero, with a wonderful goal and what an afternoon. Well, it's been absolutely terrific, isn't it? What a wonderful uh, performance by Hereford in the end when they looked dead and buried, got back into the game. And it's a terrific goal that sealed their win. How do you feel? Uh, lots of words, mate. It's unbelievable. Fans of different class. Uh, game was emotions all over the place. Thought we were it was going all the way at one stage. Thought we were going to lose at one stage. Uh, to come back as we did, great character and unbelievable. At what point did you know it was one? Well, not until the final whistle. They, to be fair, they kept pressing us, kept putting pressure under us. Um, so when the final whistle went, just massive relief, massive relief. And what an effort to keep coming back like that. Did, did you have to work hard to stop your teammates' heads dropping? Yeah, of course. Um, you know, a few seasons ago, we'd go a goal down and we won't come back. Um, but this season... <laughs> We've got more resilience about us. We've done it a few times and uh, we worked so hard. We worked so hard. And the disappointments that this club have had at this stage for the last couple of seasons, you must have thought it was going that way again. Yeah, of course we did. But, you know, as I say, third time lucky. Um, nothing else to say. I bet you can't wait to get your hands on that trophy, can oh, you? Yeah, I can't wait, mate. Can't Listen, wait. you are the nationwide man of the match today. Congratulations. That's the first of many. Cheers, thank you. Cheers. Consistently over the last three seasons, they have been the second best 
But they have ultimately been frustrated by the playoffs. Not this year. This year they will remember the playoffs happily. 11 points behind Accrington Stanley they were last year. 12 points behind Barnet the year before. Just one point from automatic promotion. But 17 clear of Shrewsbury who eventually went up. The class of 2006 for Hereford have done it. They've got them back where they feel they belong. Big, big performances and contributions throughout the season from all these players. Many of them right at the start of their career with big things ahead of them. Players who might have had to leave as they have done in previous years at Hereford when failing to get promotion. Some of the big names have been plucked by other clubs this year. They will be holding on to them in the Football League, you would suspect. One of the best supported clubs at this level. Wayne Brown, who picked himself up, dusted himself down after that blow to the head late on. Looked like the game may yet turn again. And Brown was down. And the prospect of penalty kicks with outer goalkeeper was very much a real one. They held on though, Brown recovered, and Hereford kept that one goal advantage. After twice coming from behind, they were never going to let a goal, a goal lead slip, really. And Graham Turner, what a proud moment this will be for him. He's letting all his coaching staff go first, get their medals. There will be a wonderful party as years of frustration and pain are all released tonight. Over the gentleman, Graham Turner lets everyone else go first. Just hope there'll be some medals left for him at the end of this. There is. A giant smile from Graham Turner. He's done the planning, his players have gone out there and implemented his plans. It certainly wasn't plain sailing for Hereford. Twice behind. Plenty of nervous moments along the way, but they end up getting their hands on the Bob Lord Trophy. The young captain, Tamika Makandawari, lifts the trophy. That's the signal that Hereford are heading back to the Football League. Almost a decade without league football. That will not be the case at Egbert Street next season. They are back and they are going to enjoy it. Let the party start. Graham, congratulations. Just how does it feel to have finally, finally done it? Well, I think relief is the first feeling. Uh, we've been so close on several occasions. It's been long, hard uh, nine years for us to get back in there. And I think the overwhelming feeling right at the moment is relief. But there's the excitement, the joy of seeing the supporters celebrating behind us. Terrific scenes for us. We've taken a massive big following here, nearly 10,000, and they're enjoying every minute of it. And you had to keep coming from behind as well. What resilience. Well, we've done it uh, quite consistently since Christmas, and uh, to come back from the goals that they scored was just showed the character in the side. And uh, there were some cracking goals. I thought it was a good game. Uh, in fairness to Halifax, they are a good side. Chris Wilde has done a magnificent job there, but it's our day today. It'll be their day another day. Didn't they make you work for it, though? We knew they would. We'd had them watched, we watched them on videos, and we knew they were a well-organised, uh, highly motivated side. So we had to be at our best to beat them, and we had a slow start to the game. We never got into it, but as the game went on, I'm pleased that some of the young lads started to play, and we did OK. As chairman, you might have had to sack yourself as manager if you hadn't done this, surely. <laughs> I thought about it as well, yeah, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it's been a long time, those nine years, and uh, it's been heartbreaking at times, but we're there. We forget about everything else for a few days now. Congratulations, enjoy your celebrations, and good luck next season. Thank you very much.